Hey, big thanks to Bluefin Brands on this one. Check them out in the description, as well as links as to where you can pick this one up. Dragon Ball, Pokemon, Kaiju, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. Hey there, collectors, it's Steven here, and welcome to another Pacific Rim review. Yeah, it's 2022, and uh, we're still doing these. That's a pretty good sign, right? Yeah, maybe we'll get more to come. Who knows? Anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at the Robot Spirits Atlas Destroyer from the Netflix anime-exclusive Pacific Rim The Black. All right, so back in 2018, Tamashii Nations finally stuck their toe in the water to deliver on some Pacific Rim products. We got one solo Chogokin release, we got some Robot Spirits, and they did a soft reboot of their Soft V Spirits lineup with some Pacific Rim Uprising Kaiju. Now, back then, when they did the Robot Spirits releases, they were rather budget-friendly. I think Gypsy Avenger was 20 bucks, and the rest of them were 30 but here with Atlas Destroyer, we're taking a look at what is billed as a $40 to $50 figure, depending on the retail outlet. Some folks have been a little hesitant considering the original releases were rather more affordable where this one ups the price point. Now we can assume that with a higher price point we're going to have more of a figure here. Now is that true? Well let's take a look to see whether or not it's going to be worth adding into your collection. Spoiler alert, yes. I do want to go back again really quick and talk about the Uprising Jaegers again. Uh, for each of those releases, what they did was they crammed as much as they could into each release in terms of sculpt and paint, articulation, and accessories. Look, they were between $20 and $30 on the shelves at Toys R Us. Rest in peace, boo-boo! If you can actually believe that. Yes, yours truly could we actually did go in and pick them up off the shelves. That is how cool it was. Now, will this one see a retail release in stores? Dunno, can't say. But the point being is that for some of the smaller details for those Jaegers, unfortunately, those were not included in the final product. Now, what I'm talking about is maybe a super duper small detail that was found on Gypsy's chest, maybe something that was found on Obsidian's forearms, maybe there was going to be a decal that was found on uh, Titan's thigh. I don't know, just something small like that. Those were not included in the final product. So for here, for Atlas Destroyer, I am going to have to say that those types of things, I'm not going to dock this point's for in any way, shape, or form, because that's sort of the feeling that they're going for with these Jaeger releases. They're cramming as much as they can in here, but making it very budget friendly. And considering in Japan this is a P Bandai exclusive, don't worry, and the US Bluefin got your back, uh, this is rather good to see. Now, the only detriment that I will bring up, the only sort of downside, is that in some areas it kind of looks like the spray or the brush, whatever they use to apply the paint application, it looks like it may have ran out or was just a little bit thin. Where's that? I'm not actually going to say. Why? Because it is so mi minuscule, so minor in those areas where it happens. Uh, if you haven't seen it, then, well, I guess it won't be bothering you that much. Atlas Destroyer looks really good considering everything it has going for it, and honestly, I really like it. All the panels look fantastic. It really does look like a really well put together model kit, but you don't have to put it together. The one thing that I really do want to praise this figure for is going to be that metallic con pod. That visor is just so good. I really love it when Bandai is able to really, really execute those effects rather well, especially at a rather affordable price point. All right, articulation time, and then we will actually move right on over to accessories, because uh, not a whole lot to talk about, but a good bang for our buck. So if you're familiar with the Pacific Rim Uprising Jaegers, then you pretty much know what we're going to be getting here with good old Atlas, uh, with just a couple of changes to the engineering, because we're getting a little bit more bang for our buck. So head is going to plug in on a ball joint to the neck system here, and she's going to be able to look around that far uh, left and right. She's going to be able to rock forward and back and look up about that far and down about that far. Now, there is going to be a block, if you will, in the neck that is going to be on a ball joint as well, and that's going to assist in getting her to look down about that far and up about that far. She does have this little... I guess one might call it a collar, this little uh, brace here. I mean, whatever that might be, the Pan Pacific Defense Corps logo, of course. But still, that does sort of uh, block the articulation just a little bit, but we do have a little bit of a workaround I'll talk about in just a minute. Let's continue on down the figure, and we are going to take a look at the shoulders, which they are going to plug in on ball joints. Now, if you're not familiar with the Robot Spirits Jaegers, uh, they are going to, let's just go ahead and pop this arm off here so I can show you, um, pretty much all of the ball joint connections are going to have this little cut here. And what's pretty neat, I'll see if maybe I can just go ahead and do this right now, 
um, that cut can turn. So if you get really fancy, you can actually angle that cut in, well, different directions. So this way you can get a little bit extra range of movement out of your figure. So normally, pop this back in. Well, yeah, no, this, this will be better. Uh, there we go. Okay, so normally like a ball joint, you'll just get this range of movement here. See that? So the movement changes just a little bit. Uh, we do have those shoulder pads though, and a lot of folks are probably thinking, oh, those get in the way of the articulation. But thankfully, those are going to be uh, clip-ons, so they do pop off. They're intended to clip uh, pop off, and they are on ball joints, so they wiggle around as well. Now, as you saw, since there is going to be a ball joint attachment, uh, we get basically hinge movement out of the shoulders where they plug into the arms, so we can get Atlas to T-pose, which is pretty cool. Now, if you do push that, we will get that to pop off, but that's okay. That's a uh, feature, it's not a bug, okay? All right. Bicep swivel, double hinge elbow. To be honest, you're more so only going to be using that hinge closer to the forearm, because if you do get that hinge moving closer to the bicep um, it does tend to move in more so at the bicep kind of as you're seeing right there and you can't force it any more than that so uh, just a recommendation for myself i like that a bit better but hey you know you may like chocolate i may like vanilla just how the world goes for the wrists ah oh, come on sometimes you just don't clip it in well enough all right for the wrist we are going to have ball joint movement as you can see ball joint because you have swappable hand parts we get splayed and fists. That's pretty much all you're gonna need, really, uh, unless you have a specific um, like Kamehameha hand or something, so great. Ab crunch, ball joint. Because of the sculpt, though, um, little, little restricted. However, rocking side to side is fantastic. Twisting and turning, not so much. Going back, that's about as far back as she can go. Forward, that's about as far forward, which is rather impressive. Now, compared to Gypsy Avenger, there was no waist joint. Here we do have a waist joint, it's going to be on a ball joint, and as you can see, if it weren't for this, then we would have a little bit better movement, but I mean, that's a part of the design, nothing they can do there. So she can ultimately look down about that far, and look up about that far, which is good. All right, hips, ball joints, where they plug into the body, and she can kick about that far back, and that far forward. Splits, well we do have this big lip here for the thigh armor, and that's about as far out for the splits. Now, something of note, since this is gonna be a ball joint connection, they do plug in on ball joints at the thigh as well. So as you can see here, there's this piece of sculpt that plugs in on a ball joint, and you can kind of pop the legs out just a little bit. Yeah, so you can get a little bit of a wider stance. And that's also gonna to lead to uh, thigh swivel, but more so thigh ball joints. We are going to have double hinge knees, cool, and ankle ball joints, double. I mean, look, look at that. That's impressive. No toe hinge, but when you when you can do that, do you need a toe hinge? I'll leave that up to you. All right, so articulation. Um, is it going to be amazing? Not necessarily amazing, comparatively speaking, uh, but very good. I, I do like this one. I think it moves pretty well. Um, if you're a fan of robots, you know, it, it, it's a robot spirit. It's, it, it's Bandai doing what they do best. Um, it's like pizza, even if it's not good, if it's bad, it's pizza. It, it's still going to be at least good. Now, I showed you I showed you accessories, so please answer me. So, we do get this alternate arm from Chaos Nemesis here, okay? Now, in the promotional stuff, they do show you that it has to be plugged into the right arm. Well, if you just turn it, you can plug it in the other one. Plug it in the left, because that's left, that's right. Yeah. All right, so uh, anyway, let's go ahead and do that. All you got to do is just pop the arm off. It recommends you popping this part off first. I'm, I'm a professional, kids. I think I know what I'm doing. And then, there you go. That's it. That's all you have to do. So the correct way would be to remove, pop off, then plug that in. I'm able to do it in just one fell swoop. So uh, real quick, we'll go over the articulation. So ball joint, as you saw, so it can spin. We can get a good T-pose out of it. Very cool. Uh, moving it down once you move it up, I feel like you have to baby it just a little bit because it does like to pop out if you do that. But, I mean, it's okay. Not really that big of an issue. We do get a bicep swivel, but because of that little lip, doesn't really want to go full 360. You can get it. Um, I'm just not doing what I, what I should be doing there just for demonstration purposes uh, because that does rub up against this. Something to keep in mind. 
we do have double elbow hinge, which is cool. And these little pincers are all on ball joints, so you can spin them around if you want. Very cool. You can even pop them off if you want. And then we're going to have another accessory that I'm going to show you here in a minute. It's going to be a saber chain. But before we take a look at that, here are going to be some up close and personal pictures with this alternate arm part. And as you can see here, I mean, the detailing is going to be pretty much on brand for the Jaegers in the Robot Spirits lineup. Pretty straightforward, not a whole lot of super duper over the top, over the moon, like let's say metal build detail or Soul Chogokin. Uh, realistically speaking, it blends in well with the Jaeger, even if it's going to be a completely different color. I really do like the detailing here overall. Actually kind of reminds me of a model kit, kit bash model kit, if you will. It's pretty nice. Now, if you're going to go ahead and you're going to go all the way here with this one, we do have the Saber chain. And the saber chain is going to plug in. And the way that it's going to do that is there's going to be a little peg in there that you've already seen in the up close shots that has to get popped out. It can be difficult to do that. What I would recommend is carefully keeping track of these, popping these out, getting something that can fit in the little uh, gap, pop it out, and then you can just plug these back in and you're good to go. Okay. Whoop. Not if you drop them. You're not good if you drop them. All right. And then when you take a look in the hole, you'll notice that there's going to be a little uh, little extra bit there. I don't know what you would call that. And then there's going to be a little nub here. So you just have to make sure everything is lined up correctly. And bada bing, bada boom, we're good to go. Now, one thing I didn't make mention for the articulation is that that little base spins. So this way, it can fire the chain just like that. And that's going to be it for the accessories. So overall, I do have to say that in terms of accessories, I mean, hey, you know, we get alternate splayed left and right hands, which that's exactly what we need for any sort of humanoid figure. We get a whole nother alternate arm part that comes with a weapon. Cool. The only thing I could maybe say is that for the weapon, uh, maybe some alternate methods of display for the chain, maybe a shorter one, maybe a bendy wire one. I mean, considering the price point, I don't know. I, I don't know what else could be possible, but I mean, hey, what we get is very good and it's rather solid. If you need support stands, which there is going to be a hole in the waist area <clears throat> for this one for a Tamashi support arm, uh, you can definitely check out some videos that I have to help you out. Now, if you are looking to fit this in your collection, here's going to be a size comparison for you. So this way you can see how big Atlas Destroyer is going to be. And... um I think it's rather rock solid. The only thing that I would like to say is Gypsy Danger, where are you at? Yeah. Oh, hey, there you are. Solo Chogokin. Buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. When Bandai initially did their Pacific Rim lineup with the Uprising figures back in oh, 2018, <clears throat> there was a lot a lot of anticipation for them to release, and they released at a very affordable price point, and a lot of fans were happy. I do have to say here that Atlas Destroyer does bump up the price point a little bit, but I would say, likewise, with the increase in price does come the increase in satisfaction. I was a little hesitant going back and forth if this was going to be one that should grace my shelves. Grace it. But at the end of the day, I do think this is a solid release. Great articulation. The accessories for a Jaeger that's, to my all interpretation, supposed to be a training Jaeger. Uh, great. It looks wow. Yeah. Overall, I think it's a rock solid release. Now, Bandai, let's uh, let's get a six inch Gypsy Danger and knife head going. Can we please? Pretty please. I'm asking nicely. Thank you. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up, thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand-selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand-selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.